On February 8, 2020, the world lost a legend. That was the day that actor Robert Conrad lost his battle with heart disease, passing away in Malibu, California at age 84. Conrad was perhaps best known for his role as Secret Service agent James T. West in The Wild Wild West, which ran on CBS from 1965 to 69. He later portrayed World War II ace Pappy Boyington on the critically acclaimed, although relatively short-lived, NBC military drama series Baba Black Sheep. Throughout his career, he became known for his tough guy image. During his years on the Wild Wild West, he famously performed all of his own stunts. Because of his work on screen, people viewed him as an intense person who shouldn't be messed with. This reputation seemed to follow him even when cameras weren't rolling. Even though he was seen as the kind of man that was more than capable of holding his own, Robert Conrad often struggled to hold it all together. Join Facts First as we attempt to see beyond Conrad's tough guy image and understand who he really was. He was oozing with charisma even in his younger years. Robert Conrad was every lady's dream guy back in the day. He was charming, attractive, and confident. Women, and some men, both young and old, couldn't seem to get enough of him, especially during his younger years. After establishing an acting career, Conrad took a stab at a music career under the name Bob Conrad. He put out a number of pop and rock singles in the late 50s and early 60s, while occasionally being featured on the airways as a radio presenter. He was a very macho guy and had little trouble incorporating elements of his own personality into his film roles. His rugged personality developed as a result of his childhood. He was born in 1935 to teen parents on the south side of Chicago. His father, Leonard Falk, worked at a New Jersey plant that produced chocolate flavoring, while his mother, Jacqueline Hubbard, found work as a publicist. The young couple got divorced when Robert was still quite young, leaving Hubbard to be his primary caretaker. While raising Conrad, Jacqueline taught him to be tough, knowing how unforgiving the world could be. He likely also developed some of this trait while studying at a strict military school. Hubbard eventually remarried, after which Conrad was sent to live with his grandmother. His experience in the military school showed him the value of being fierce and fearless, and he carried these values with him to the grave. At 15, without apprehension, Robert enlisted in the Marines, but he was kicked out after his superiors discovered how young he was. Back in those days, you had to be at least 17 to join the armed forces. Undeterred, he clung to his ruggedness. Once he found his way to Hollywood, this trait became one of his most valuable assets. He was a broke college dropout when he eloped with his first wife. Conrad was always very much in touch with his masculinity, and he displayed it in just about every way you can think of. But when it came to matters of the heart, he wasn't afraid to allow his emotions to guide him. He loved passionately, and at times, blindly. While studying at Northwestern University, the Chicago native met and fell madly in love with Joan Kenley. Instead of finishing school, he dropped out and eloped with her in 1952. Joan came from a very wealthy family. Her father was a successful lawyer, and she was attending a prestigious religious boarding school when she met Conrad. In stark contrast to Kenley, Conrad, who was only 17, was broke with no career, fame, or even a job. So, in an attempt at making himself look a little better with Kenley's family and be a decent provider, he lied about his age once again, claiming he was 21 so he could get a job as a docker. Conrad and Kenley remained inseparable. They ended up changing names to shield their respective identities after Joan's family objected to their union. The only way to stay together was to assume new identities and elope, so that's what they did. Later that year, they eventually revealed their whereabouts once they were all set to welcome their first child. To make ends meet, Conrad jumped around from job to job. In addition to working as a docker, he found employment as a candy factory worker and milkman. Although money was scarce, he and his young wife managed to remain happy. Two years after the lovers settled down, Conrad suddenly lost his job as a docker. After getting the axe, he began singing at cafes. Although talented, he didn't find any success until meeting Nick Adams, a friend who promised to help him get a head start in Hollywood. In 1957, with the help of Adams, Conrad signed a contract with Warner Brothers, earning him $250 a week. His first role was playing a private investigator named Tom Lopeka in the TV series Hawaiian Eye. With success came expectations. 
For the next several decades, Conrad made quite the name for himself playing tough guys on TV. And while he loved these kinds of roles and put much of his own personality into each performance, his image ended up becoming something of a blessing and a curse. In 1971, Robert was preparing to stage a return to television as the star of a new Jack Webb-produced series called The DA. While promoting the new program, Conrad made appearances on two Adam-12 crossover episodes, the first of which was called The Radical. In the episode, fans were bewildered by Conrad's new character, the suit-wearing, clean-cut district attorney Paul Ryan. Conrad's fans were used to seeing him look gruff while throwing punches, but here he was all cleaned up and ready for court. Despite concerns from his base, Conrad insisted his new role fit him just as well as any of his previous. Before taking on the role, Conrad wanted to make sure he was signing up for a winner. Since Jack Webb's previous shows had all done quite well, he felt relatively confident this one would follow suit. The DA was based on actual criminal cases, and he thought this added element would provide more shock and intrigue for audiences. Unfortunately, Conrad's prediction was off. The DA only aired one season before being canceled. This was because, in part, everywhere Conrad went, people expected him to be the tough guy, even when he was out in the real world. Talking to the Miami News in 1974, Conrad said that when he was in public, he constantly got assaulted by, quote, wise guys. People wanted to see how far they could push the TV star to prove he was the big, strong, tough guy he played on TV. In one incident, a group of men blocked his path with their vehicle and started shouting obscenities at him. At first, he didn't think much of it, as by that time, dealing with verbal abuse was something he'd learned to live with. But the encounter quickly escalated to the point of physical abuse. He quickly got out of the situation, evading the police in the process, but that wasn't the only time he ran into such problems. While the world saw Conrad as a macho tough guy that you wouldn't want to look at sideways, those closest to him knew him as a kind, loyal friend. With that in mind, it makes sense that Conrad preferred to run off to his favorite getaway location, a 100-acre ranch in Northwest California, between films and television appearances. At least there, no one expected him to constantly be in character, nor were there any wise guys trying to push his buttons to see if he truly was the guy they knew on TV. At his ranch, Conrad didn't have a TV, phone, or radio. It was only there he found peace and quiet, far from the flashing lights, fistfights, and expectations. Conrad's first marriage lasted for 25 years and five children before they divorced in 1977. That same year, Robert met his second wife, Lavelda Lone Fan. They quickly married and ended up having three additional children together. They divorced in 2010. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Robert Conrad? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.